Demonette, a Slanesh. Strange music skirled through the mists, repellent and inviting at the same time. Elaria Moonspeaker's eyes opened wide, her hand closing protectively around her waystone by reflex. A cold caress of fear ran through the bone marrow of her arms and legs. Surely this nightmare was already over. The slain Emperor's children were already disappearing from sight, the heavy battle plate of the post-human warriors dragging their bodies into the marsh. The Yanari strike force had lost seven aspect warriors in the fight, but they had killed three times that number, and the souls of the Eldarai's fallen were already being gathered so they might live on. Then, something moved in the mist, languid and graceful, and Alaria knew their doom had come for them. It was a tapering claw at the end of a lithe limb. Suddenly, a crested head with two large eyes burst from the mists to her right, hissing like a lizard. Elaria shrieked, raising her shuriken catapult and opening fire. The demon was no longer there. Elaria's fellow guardians came in close, almost back to back, and for a moment she felt safer. Then she looked down. Bursting out of the brackish liquid came six pale terrors. One of them wrapped its milky white arms around Alaria's legs, crawling bodily up her like some pallid spider. She felt its warmth, smelt its intoxicating musk, and felt both lust and dread consume her. The demon leered in close and bit the waystone from her breast with its needled teeth. Then its claws closed around her throat, and Alaria knew no more. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and units of the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. Alas, I have had some severe issues with my cogitator, and the tech priests are yet to come back to me with the correct unguents and incenses to use, so a few lighter entries will come while I attempt to resurrect my old unit and all of the many myriad of details therein contained. Hence, a biscuit of law, a nugget only. But have no fear. As soon as the Omnissiah chooses to shine his beneficence on me, then we shall see more involved meals, or banquets, resurge on the guides. So do bear with me during this intensely testing time. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, Demonettes. Most numerous of Slanesh's servants are his lesser demons, the Demonettes. They serve as courtiers and courtesans in the Palace of Pleasure, created to fulfill Slanesh's every passing whim. They fill Slanesh's throne room, lounging upon silken cushions, gossiping endlessly as they scheme to earn greater favor from their willful master. The Demonettes are also Slanesh's warriors and messengers beyond his realm. The Dark Prince is given to extreme changes of mood, and when frustrated, he lashes out with his legions, sending his Demonettes to tear down everything he finds repugnant and crude and replace them with artistic vistas of destruction. In battle, Demonettes can be seen dancing across the blood-soaked ground, dead bodies forming a carpet beneath their feet. Their honeyed voices are raised in joyous songs of praise to Sarnesh as they slay and maim in the name of agony and pleasure. They are lithe, dexterous killers, gifting their victims with a mixture of excruciatingly painful caresses and the most delicate and tender of killing strokes. Even in the most gruesome of conflicts, the demonettes smile in sacred ecstasy as they go about their deadly work delighting in the waves of emotion emanating from their enemies. In appearance, the demonettes are both beautiful and revolting. They have an androgynous charm that is heightened by a permeating sense of beguilement. Though their true forms are repulsive and terrifying, their supernatural power makes them appear as the ultimate beauty, an object of desire in the eyes of mortals, 
regardless of their race, gender, or morality. None exposed to the lesser demons of Sanesh forget the tide of living sensuality. It evokes both loathing and a perverse longing that forever gnaws at the minds of those who see them. Sometimes, Sinesh is more delicate in his machinations, seeking to undermine the will of his foes, tempting them from their chosen path and removing their opposition to his cause. Sinesh will also dispatch demonettes to corrupt those he wishes to enslave. Using their seductive spells, the demonettes whisper into the dreams and nightmares of their victims, fueling their darkest desires with promises of glory and fulfillment. The warriors of the Chaos Space Marines are especially susceptible to this. Many a would-be conqueror has summoned a host of Sinesh's handmaidens in the mistaken belief that they will clinch a lasting victory, only to find it is he who is the pawn and that his actions have a terrible cost. Their lies, bodies, and entreating voices lure wayward souls to lower defenses and open up to ravenous, violent consumption from the jaws and jagged claws of the ladies of Sanesh. This base allure is not, however, the only temptation demonettes have at their disposal. Demonettes oftentimes appear vaguely feminine, with pale purplish skin. One of their arms will usually mutate at the elbow into a huge crab-like pincer or other natural weapon. Demonettes of Sanesh often have extraordinarily long prehensile tongues may sport a single or multiple sets of female humanoid breasts, a particular mark of favor of the hermaphroditic Prince of Pleasure. A demonet's androgynous charm is heightened by a permeating sense of guile. This is heightened by the strange mask that hangs about them like a cloying perfume. Yet there is something about admiring their charms that causes self-loathing amongst any who view them. Demonettes are possessed of a hypnotic glamour, an aura that disguises their true forms, rendering them as alluring visions of perfection. Though their true forms are repulsive and terrifying, their supernatural powers make them appear as their ultimate beauty, an object of desire in the eyes of mortals. In several earlier encountered manifestations, Demonet's features also included white, milky skin, bald heads, female breasts, narrow eyes, pointed teeth, and occasionally horns. Their legs end in bird-like three-talon claws, and they may have long, scything limbs in place of one or both arms. They are quick, attractive, and fearsome. Most recent encounters between the Imperium and the Demonettes have seen their demon's appearance changed. They now appear more closely to female, with writhing tentacle-like hair. Rather than the crab-like claws of old, their talons are sickle-shaped, and as a whole, they appear far more attractive and seductive than their previous counterparts. So much so, that there are tales of soldiers refusing to fight when they catch a glimpse of their alluring beauty. Seekers of Sinesh Seekers of Sinesh are a deadly combination of beauty, claw, and passion, which rides at the vanguard of many Slaneshi demonic legions, sweeping across opposing scouts and other light resistance. Some who stand in the path of Seekers are spared destruction and are allowed to join the armies of the Dark Prince if they show the proper appreciation and desire. These swift and powerful creatures possess swollen sensoriums, that are utilized to taste fear, joy, or lust on the breeze from a mile away in order to track down their mortal victims. The steeds of Slanesh that the Seekers ride upon use their long, prehensile tongues to dart out and ensnare their victims, shuddering in delight as they taste the mortal souls. Before the terrified morsel can struggle free, they are dragged towards the demonic beasts and their riders, whose fanged smiles and curved claws welcome them to an agonizing oblivion. Heralds of Slanesh The more privileged a demonette is, the more she pleases the Dark Prince, the closer to his throne she is allowed to approach. The most favored demonettes are his handmaidens, fastest and most deadly of Slanesh's courtesans. Also known as the Heralds of Slanesh, these demons are allowed onto Slanesh's dais 
to feed him sweet meats and stroke his androgynous body with their oiled claws. It is to those depraved creatures that Sananesh entrusts his most subtle machinations, for his greater demons are created primarily for excessive violence, rather than the delicacy that the Dark Prince's ploys require on occasion. So it is that a herald of Sanesh leads the Dark Prince's followers in the ongoing dance, using her seductive spells to corrupt her foes and inspiring them to give in to their deepest needs. With promises of glory and self-fulfillment, the herald twists the aspirations and ambitions of her prey into self-obsession, paranoia, and madness, luring the victim into the indulgent road towards self-destruction and the furtherance of the Dark Prince's desires. End quote. Now demonettes are colossal fun to see on the field of combat. A riot of color dashing towards your lines, Fun to chop down in their throngs with bolt of fire. But if they hit, if they get to you, it can be a nasty little event indeed. I have to admit that the only time I faced off against a full army of these beings, I thought myself oh so clever. Because I had a suspicion my opponent would field his gals as they were newly painted. So, indulging in a rare bout of caddishness, I brought along a Dukari mobile army. Lots of flyers, lots of skimmers. My friend looked at my deployment and offered his hand. Offered surrender. I stated we should see how it goes. He agreed, of course, with good humor, as I often had when others at the club had brought what I considered a nasty mismatch. Oh, but oh, how hubris came for me that day because he managed to catch my little boats one by one, chasing me around the field at such a rate I could scarce believe. My firing culled many, of course, but they kept coming back. And within an hour, I was in tears of laughter at myself, as the last of my skimmers was annihilated, and I had no more boots left on the ground. Hence, despite my air superiority, my flyers crashing up and down the field... I was soundly beaten. And I have found this often, for when I set out to make an unkind or unfair army, I often find that Lady Luck turns from me and my endeavours end in ashes. Hence I play the game as it should be played, for fun. Fortuna keeps me honest. Now I would note that none of this applies to the rare competitive event. There you are meant to field your best, most gnarly army. But these are indeed rare events compared to the millions of games that are played across the globe just between friends, between brothers and sisters, just for fun. And I just wish that others would note more heavily that the tournament scene is very loudly represented online, but they are in fact the tiniest, minutest of fractions of the games that go on, the hobby time involved. And being a competitive demon on the board does not make you a better hobbyist, fan, or individual. So, go forth, as I always say. Do try to remember. It's supposed to be fun. If somebody beats your army, they beat your army. They are, and never will be beating you. Okay? Let the war be on the tabletop, not in the clubhouse, or even the comments section. Because, let's be honest, this is a very stressful world we now live in. So let our hobby time return to being the hot bath for the mind that it was always meant to be. And now, as I said, Happy New Year. And no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.